Hey guys, Sarah Gorn here, Blue Maroon on the internet, and I just wanted to do a quick tutorial today for you guys. Also my very first video recording of my voice going on the internet, so forgive me if it is a little awkward and slow and confusing. I'll try and make it not confusing because that's kind of opposite of the point of tutorials. Anyways, so today I'm doing a tutorial on TV Paint Animation Program. After my last animation, I just wanted to show you guys a couple things about how to use the program. So I know that quite a few people don't actually know how to use it, and I've had a couple people ask me some questions about it, because there aren't very many good videos on it. I found a couple that I'm going to post in the description when I post the video, so just take a look at those also, because chances are I'm going to miss a couple things while I'm going through this, just because the first time and didn't write a script, so I'm just going to go for it and try and show you guys as much as I can without rambling on too much. So let's get started. Alright, so when you open up TV Paint, which is what we're looking at right now, it automatically opens up a project already. So you may not like the settings in it, so if you want to make a new project, just go File and then New Project. And then it's going to open up this dialog box here. So on this dialog box, you have two different tabs, one's for project and one's project with camera. So if you just want to make a basic project, you can just go here and select whatever size you want. But when you do this, it's going to create a project like a Photoshop file where you can't draw outside in this dark gray area. So if you're used to using Flash or even Toon Boom, you know that they have a infinite canvas, canvas where you can draw outside of the camera area. So if you want something similar to that with TV Paint, you can go to Project with Camera, and here you can set your uh, screen size that you can do in this one as well. And so it has presets for some common ones, so I'm going to use the HDTV 720 just to prevent too much lagging while I'm doing this tutorial. And on the right side here you'll see that there's a width, a height, and all this fun stuff, and this is the drawing area. So this is the area that you can draw outside of the camera view. So as you can see, I've already played around with this before, so I have it set to quite a little bit larger than the, draw the camera area. So you can set that to whatever you want, just don't make it too big or else you're probably going to get lots of lighting going on. Um, generally, I mean, you probably only needed about probably 200%, I would say. Anything more than that, and I mean, I don't see why you'd be drawing that far off the camera. Anyway, so I'm just going to show you what this looks like, but then I'm going to go back to the other one while I'm continuing the tutorial. So, click new project, and as you'll see, it just kind of looks like a basic uh, camera view, or like a basic canvas right now. I mean, I can't draw on the black area still, but if I go over here, you'll see these are our main panels over here, and there's a little camera in the corner. If you click the camera, it'll actually show which area is going to be exported in the camera area. And then if you go back to this little squiggly line, which is your uh, stroke tool or your brush tool, you click on it and the black area remains. So then when you draw, you can see exactly what's going to be on the screen. So that's just something kind of handy that I actually figured out today even. And it's, it can come in handy when you're doing shots like a walk cycle or something across the screen. It's always nice to know, you know where that ground plane is. You can actually draw the character's feet while they're walking. Um, so let's go make another project, just one that's... Um, so I'll go File, a New Project, and again I'm just going to use, I might even go down to 480 just to make sure that I have optimal performance here, and go New Project. So let's just start, I'm going to go through different areas in TV Paint. So I'm going to start with the Timeline area, which is at the bottom here. So as you can see, we have a layer that's automatically created. And there's this one little frame here and none following it. You see this little hole beneath, behind it. And so I can draw on this drawing and I'll just draw, I'm going to just draw numbers just to make this easier for you guys to follow. And that's just held for the duration of the animation. But if I were to play this, it's not going to play because there's only one frame. So even though it's held for this long, it's only going to be exporting this one frame that's right here. 
And so to make these frames longer and to add other frames, it's not, not very similar to Flash and the way you add them, but it is similar in the way that it has frames. And so what you do is you drag this little thing on the bottom right corner of the frame and you just stretch it out to the very end and then that's that there is what's going to be played. So now when I play it, you'll see that it's actually going through the whole time there. And so to add new drawings in when you're trying to create new frames, you can't actually just, there's no like right click add frame kind of thing. What you want to do is, well there's a uh, hot key for it if you press backspace that's going to clear the drawing and give you a blank keyframe to work with. Another way to manually do that is if you look in the corner here there's a crossbone and skull kind of thing up here that also does the exact same thing. So on here I'm going to write a 2. And so you can keep doing that and it kind of that's how you create frames for your animation. And one thing that you'll probably remember from other animation programs is that they have onion skinning options. So TV Paint also has this. You'll see this little light bulb in the layers column. If you press that light, the button corresponding with it on your layer, it shows you what your other layer is. And actually, I'm just going to delete that. And so if there is other settings that you can change with your light box, um, if you go to Windows and then go Tools and find the Light Table panel, It'll show up this little box, which I have collapsed right now, so you just press this arrow and it'll open it back up. And you'll see all these numbers that actually correspond with how many frames you can go back. And so, and by actually, it's actually drawings, I shouldn't say frames, so like, there's this is held for two frames, but it's only one drawing, is what I mean. And so I'm just going to go ahead and make a bunch of blank drawings here. And I'm going to keep filling these in with just numbers to make it easy for you guys because my pen pressure didn't seem to like to work while I'm recording, so no fancy drawings for you guys. Alright, so I'll go to 10. Um, another thing I actually wanted to point out while I'm filling in these frames is Make sure that you're on the very starting frame, the very the little picture here when you're doing your drawings, because if you accidentally skip ahead to the second one here and you draw a mark, it's also going to make a new drawing, but with that previous drawing in it as well. Um, I'm not too sure how it could be useful. I'm sure you could find a way, but just be careful of that. I mean, if you do accidentally create a second drawing that you don't need, you can pull either, you know, the left or pull like the right tab and that can collapse, Oops, sorry, will collapse it. So say I don't want this drawing that I put this extra line in, which is the second one here. I'll just pull that left tab and close it and then that just drags this frame further and deletes the other one. Um, yeah. So also when you're moving around your animations, if you want to change the length of a uh, frame, as you'll see in the boxes they have these little numbers that shows how long they're held for. So say you want to stretch this one to be held for three frames, I can just pull it and that keeps, that makes it longer. But it'll also push the rest of your drawings forward, so just be mindful of that if you're adjusting your timing in your scene. Because it'll, if you're, especially if you're lip syncing to something, it's going to throw all your syncs off. So you just have to be really careful while you're using that. Um, it's really helpful if you use the right side here. Because that way, if you want to shorten it or lengthen it, it's not going to push anything, but you just have to make sure you have enough room to move it around. So I'm just going to put those back. Alright, so the timeline has a lot of really uh, cool things that I could show you in it, but I'm going to maybe jump to the tools quickly, and we're kind of going to hop back and forth between them, because there's a couple functions in here that will be more helpful if I can show you the tools first. So this little squiggly line, like I said before, is your brush tool. And as you can see down here, there's different uh, settings that we can choose from. First one is the airbrush. I'll actually just show you the, the three that are most common, because other ones are kind of random. So we have the airbrush, which is like a soft brush, like in Photoshop. We have the pen tool, which is like a hard brush in Photoshop. And then oh, there's also this mechanical pencil, which is just a really straight line, which could be good for line work if you're wanting to use that. 
Uh, and then there's the, just the regular, like a charcoal pencil it says. Um, I like using this one for my rough animations, even for cleanup sometimes to give a more interesting line. Um, it's just got a nice texture to it, adds lots of interest. Um, yeah, so those are the, the main pencil tools. And so other things that you can use up here, there's a selection tool, which is this little S with the selection, like the dashed lines around it. And so this is like the, it's, right now it's on freehand select, which is like the lasso tool in Photoshop. So if I go on the screen and I lasso that, you'll see that um, it makes a selection. And you can move that selection if you go over to the transform tool, or else it might be on panning tool. I think that's what it's default on. And so panning is how you can move stuff around. Um, so if, say I want to move this chunk that I selected, I can just move it around and there we go, it's moved. Uh, be mindful if you're using the transform tool, you can move it too, but you have to make sure when you use the transform tool, if you move something, that you press enter just to confirm it. You don't need it with panning, but with transform and warp you do. And so I'm just going to actually keep that. And one other thing I wanted to show you guys is with a selection tool in most programs, if you select something and then you copy and paste, it will copy what's selected and paste it. But with this program, at least so far, I haven't found anything that does it. If you copy it and you paste it, it only it copies the whole frame. It doesn't just copy what's selected. So I haven't found a way around that yet. Um, I will update it in the description if I do find a way, but at now, for now I don't quite know how we do that. And there's also a zoom button here, but there's actually an easier way to zoom around, which is I'll show you in corresponding with uh, how to move as well. So in Photoshop, you usually press spacebar. If you hold spacebar, your little hand will show up and you can move the screen around. But in this program, if you press spacebar, it's going to just wiggle the screen. What it does if you press spacebar is if you have multiple layers with different things on it, if you press spacebar, it'll only wiggle the layer that you're on so that you can see what layer you're drawing on, which can come in handy if you end up having lots of different layers. So how you move around is more of a Maya style. So if any of you are familiar with Maya or Autodesk, um, they usually use Alt. So if you hold Alt, you can move your screen around, which I'll just go back to this quickly. So yeah, hold Alt, you can move your screen around by using the left mouse button and holding Alt. And if you hold down Alt and use the right mouse button, you can zoom in and out, which is really handy. And also, um, while I'm on the brush tool as well, if you want to change the size, it's also like Photoshop where you can use the left and right brackets to change that. So I just see it getting bigger and smaller. And also you'll see I still have this selection on. In Photoshop you usually press Ctrl D to deselect it. But Oh, and also be mindful, I'm using Windows, so I'm using Ctrl, not Command, all those fun uh, Mac things, sorry. So PC, you'll, you, I'm sure you know how to convert it to Mac. Anyways, so so you don't press Control D to deselect in here. What you do is, because if you press Control D, this magic number thing shows up. I have no clue what it's for right now. I'm just going to ignore it. So to deselect in this program, you press Shift and Backspace, and that's how you deselect your selection. And I don't want to go into too much depth with what you can do with the camera right now, just because there's quite a bit of things you can do with it. I'm going to post a tutorial that I found really helpful below. If you guys have any more questions like about that, I'm sure I could answer them. Um, it's a really good tutorial. I think it'll be a lot of help for the camera. And uh, when you do watch that camera tutorial, just so you know, they use the project setting, which is the or project timeline, which is down here. So there's a clip timeline and project. So they're using the project one, but you can do the same thing in the this timeline. You'll know what I'm talking about if you watch the video. Um, and yeah, like there's shape tools, which I don't ever use, usually use. Um, got the eyedropper up here. There's also a hotkey for the eyedropper, which is the forward slash. Yeah. So when you're using the eyedropper in this program, it kind of gives you the option to pick whatever color you want on the TV paint screen. So if you're wanting to pick a color, it's best to go to a color that you want on here. And, I mean, really the only reason you'd really use the color picker tool is if you have a color picked out already. So, this doesn't really apply here, but 
But see, if you if I click anywhere on here, I can pick whatever color I want with the picker tool on any surface that's on the TV paint screen. All right, and oops, that deselected. So now I'm kind of going to show you guys just a couple of handy things with the timeline that kind of correspond with the tools above. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer and call this line art which is not going to be a line or just going to be a circle, but just to keep things simple. Oh, and also you'll see on the brush tools and, and any setting, all those tool settings are down here. So the P means pressure. If you hold that, it'll show you a bunch of different things that you can do with it. Um, I have to keep it on pen pressure when I'm using my pen, um, except for the power, because when I use the eraser tool, um, Oh, that's another thing. Up here you'll see color. If you want to change it to eraser, you can just go erase, but if you're using like a tablet, as soon as you go to eraser, it should hit the eraser anyways. Um, yeah, so there's all these cool different um, effects that you can put on it, but just keep color. I mean, that's the, the basic one you need. Um, yeah, let's go and make a... So I'm going to hide this layer, and so how you hide it is you see the little eyeball there. Also, I'm going to switch off that the white table. I'm going to hide that layer, the first one I did, and I'm going to collapse it with this little button here. And so now I'm on this new layer, and you can tell I'm on this new layer because it's highlighted in a light gray. I can click the up and down arrows to switch between the different layers. I can also use the side to side arrows to go frame by frame. But if you're doing an animation and you're trying to do in betweening or you know trying to flip your, through your animations, going through each single frame is kind of annoying because then you're doubling up frames. So another thing I'm going to show you guys is so I have a zero or I have a zero on this one. I'm gonna do another one, another one. And so one thing that you can do is if you press the comma, like the comma, I'm, yeah. Hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. The, the comma on your um, keyboard, it'll turn these little keyframes blue on the frame that you're on. And when you do that, you can use your greater than and less than symbols, or I guess the uh, period and uh, oh yeah, I should say apostrophe is how you yeah apostrophe is how you turn them blue. Comma and period is how you go side to side. Sorry, I don't know my grammar tools, do I? Um, so this just makes it easier, so when you're trying to flip between them, you can do it really fast, and you can get the in-between, so be similar, and get your volume similar, all that animation stuff. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick tidbit I wanted to throw on there. So now I'm also going to make another layer. I'm going to call this color, and put that below this layer just by dragging it. Just going to get a drink of water here. All right, and then just put another layer, and I'm going to call this one shading. I'm just going to show you guys a couple things that you can do with these. So on the color layer, I'm just going to go to the first one here, because it's the one that I can do the best example on. I'm going to pick my fill bucket back up here, and right now I'm on the color layer. If I just click fill, which I'm going to pick a different color quickly, I just click fill, it's going to fill the whole screen, which is not very helpful when you're trying to color your character. So this is a really easy way that I found, or that I was actually taught, to um, fill your characters in. What you can do is, like I was showing you those properties with the brush tool, there is a thing called source. The source on the uh, bucket tool, if you hold it, you can, it's on, you can pick either the layer that you're on, you can pick above, under, or what's displayed. So if you go above and you have your color right below your line art, then you can click right on there and it'll fill perfectly on what's above the liner. There's different things you can play around with this. There's the gap closing, so you know, if there's a gap, it'll automatically close it, just like in any other program like uh, Flash and Toon Boom. Expand expands like the pixel amount, so if I make it really big, you'll see it goes beyond. There's also smoothing, so if you want like a glowy effect, then you could do it beyond and it'll have like a glow. Um, also opacity if you want to mess around with that. I usually don't touch that. Um, and then there's range. So what range is, is like a tolerance level. So the um, best way to show this is if I make, go back to this layer, pick a red again. 
I'm going to go to my airbrush tool, make it smaller, not that small. Okay, got my airbrush tool, and I'm going to make a circle. I actually wonder if I can. See if I can make it more airbrushy, but that should do. And okay, so I'm gonna go back to my color layer. Go back to a green color. And so what range does is if I have range at zero with this. Oops, where did my mouse go? Oops, I have my expand still. Hold on. Okay. So when I do this, you'll see there's this white line around it, which makes Turn smoothing off will be better. It has this line around where um, the how should I explain it? Where where the like where the feathering is on the on the liner. So what range does is it kind of like a tolerance level to where the solid block of color is to where how the pixels change. You know all that sciencey talk. <laughs> I don't like kind of explain it, but. Uh, so the higher your range is, the higher it's going to ignore those pixels that are a different color uh, to the color that you're using, which I guess is the best way to explain it. Um, so the higher your range is, the more it'll kind of go in. And if you combine the range with, you know, your expand, whoops, not too much, and with, so I don't want a higher range, add some smoothing to that. So if you play around with the settings, you can get a better look to it. Um, also, this is why you just don't use the airbrush for line art, because you can't really fill it very nice. So that's why I like to stick with the pencil tool or the pen tool. Um, Alright, so that's that's how you fill in your characters if you want to do color. Um, there's some really cool things you can do to make your process a lot faster in filling your colors, but I'm not going to explain this. I actually am going to link a video below for that and you can watch that one because he explains really well these cool tools that are actually hitting on the side here so if you scroll if you're using uh, TV Paint 10 Pro if you scroll to the right side and hold there's going to be this little pop out bin that shows up and he uses a lot of cool tools in here that you can use in the animation panel so if you want to watch that video it'll help explain a couple of things for you but I'm just going to leave that for now because there's a lot more stuff I need to talk about and I just want to make sure I don't forget. People are hammering stuff outside. Sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so now we're going to go on to the shading level. This is another really cool thing that I found. Um, if you see this little thing with the circle inside of a rectangle, that's the mask tool. And it's not like a mask like you'd think in like uh, After Effects where if you mask something it's gonna things that go behind it aren't going to show up or all that fun thing that mask does. Um, how the mask tool works is kind of like clipping masks in Photoshop. Um, so if, but it, yeah, just kind of watch how I do this because it's a little different than you'd think on how you use them. So say I want to color, my, like do a shading layer, which is what I named this one layer up here. So I'm on the color layer, and I'm going to click this button here to enable a stencil, which is also, I guess, what they call it here. So, uh, sorry, I'm going to mask is a stencil. Um, and there's two stencil options on here. We have negative stencil and just the positive stencil. So I'm going to go onto my shading layer. I'm going to pick a darker color. And I'm actually going to change this layer. If you hold, see where it says color at the bottom? There you go. You can click it, and it's just like in Photoshop, you have all these cool layer effects you can do. So I'm going to switch it to Multiply. That's usually what I do my shading on. And oops, I'm going to drag that there. And so now that I have this color layer with the stencil um, enabled, and it's on positive stencil, if I color over it, let's say... Oops, get my pen tool. 
and then my color over it, it's only going to color on the green that I filled in, just like how a clipping mask would work. And so how this can, so this can make really easy shading for that. Um, another way you can do it is if you say duplicated this layer, and so it has someone hide this shading for now. So I duplicated this layer. I'm going to switch it to multiply as well and take the stencil off. Take that stencil off too. And now I'm going to use the panning tool that I showed earlier. Move it just slightly. It's just kind of a quick, cheap way to do shading if you want to. Um, I'm actually going to show you how you can move multiple frames too, so you can move your whole animation this way if you wanted, or select frames. But let's just finish what we're doing for this part. And now I'm going to turn the stencil back on, I'm going to go to negative stencil. And I'm going to change it to an eraser. And now I can erase anything that's outside of that color layer, and now it's perfectly uh, shaded in on that area. That's so just a nice little quick way you can do shading. Um, just a quick little tidbit. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm just going to show you how you can move multiple layers and uh, change the sizes of them if you need it. So say you have two characters in the scene and you animated one character way too big throughout the scene and you wanted to shrink that whole animation layer down. Um, in Flash, I, know, I don't really know if there's a way to do this other than making it like a movie clip and then shrinking the movie clip down. Um, I know that in Toon Boom there's a way to do it, but it affects like everything in the layer, so every single frame you have is affected, which sometimes it may only be like the first half of your animation that's too big, so you don't want to change that whole layer. So that's why I really like TV Paint. It's really flexible in this way. So I'm going to collapse these layers again, and go back to that very first one I made with all the numbers, hide these layers. Oh, and make sure... Make sure you always turn that stencil tool off, otherwise that's going to mess things up. Only use it when you need it, or only have it enabled when you need it. So now we're back into this layer here, uh, with all the numbers. And to do, I'll need to turn it back on. Haha, <laughs> there we go. And so, say I want to make all these numbers a lot smaller, so I'm just going to zoom out so you guys can see. So what you can do is, you see that there's these numbers below the frames, um, most people, when they try to select these frames, or at least when I used to try and select them, I would click on the image and try and drag it to select. But all it does is move your whole animation layer, which you don't want. What you want to do is you click on the numbers below, and you'll select these drawings in yellow. And that's how you can select them. So, say I select the first six numbers, and then I go here and I go to my transforma transformation tool. Oh, also another quick thing to do is, you can't just click to get these little boxes open, you have to click, hold, and kind of move over and then release the mouse to select things, so just in case you're wondering how to do that. I don't know if that's common sense or not, just that I'd bring it up. Um, so now I have all these frames selected, I'm on my transformation tool, and I'm going to shrink it down. And you don't actually have to hold shift or anything, it actually automatically shrinks it to the same size unless you're using distort. And so I shrink them all to a certain level, and so when you're on the transformation tool, when you move things around, you always have to, I can't remember if I said this earlier, but you always have to press enter once you're done moving them. So now that I press enter, if I go back to my animation, all those layers I had selected have now been applied with that transformation I did. Um, and the layers that I haven't, that I didn't select or haven't been uh, edited. So yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that. Um, it's really helpful when I make mistakes. <laughs> and... I'm just going to kind of show you a couple more things on the timeline, just kind of silly things that don't really do much, but eh, they're handy. If you click on this little color palette on the layers, you can actually change your uh, layers to different colors. So this would be helpful if you have multiple line art layers, multiple color layers, that way you can assign different colors to different things, and you know what kind of which layer you're on. I don't know. And also another thing that you can do with that is if you want to hide a layer altogether, if you turn this layer purple, you can select the purple off and that layer's gone. That way you don't need to worry about it anymore. So, just kind of organization stuff. Um, <laughs> sorry, lines going everywhere here. So I'm going to go back to this line art layer. And so just like in Photoshop, um, I'm going to turn it back on. <laughs> I'm back on my line art layer now. And I want to change these to a different color. 
So just like if you had started out with a black line for your animation, you wanted to go over with some colored line, uh, all you have to do is, you see this little kind of gradient button on your timeline? It's the, your preserve transparency button. So if I click that on my selected layer, now if I click over, it's going to turn it blue. Yay! <laughs> so that's kind of nice. You can color your line art after you're done. And let's see what other kind of help. Oh, yeah. And if you want to rotate your screen, so along with when I said, you know, there's panning, there's zooming, you can also rotate your screen by pressing Control Alt. And that brings up this little light table, or you know, anybody who's animated on paper will know this little light table disc in the pan. And so you can rotate it by clicking and dragging. So you can rotate your screen like that. And then once you've finished drawing, you can press Shift and X, and that brings your screen back to normal. So that's handy. And And so, you know, the undo on this is just control Z, and then if you want to redo, it's shift Z, I think. I don't actually, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's shift Z. Okay, we're good. <laughs> um, do -do -do. I'm also going to show you guys how to add sound to TV Paint. So if you go project and go load sound, I'm just going to take a clip from Anchorman, because I just have that sitting on my computer, and click OK. And to find your timeline with the sound in it, all you have to do is, so if say your timeline's all the way down here, uh, pull your timeline up, and then there's like two separate little tabs here you'll see. Pull the very bottom one down, and you'll see this little sound icon. What you want to do is click on the music note, and go, and then you'll see all the tracks that, or the track that you loaded is already in here. So I'm going to take the Anchorman track, and I can scrub down here. And there's sound. <laughs> and as you can see, you can see the wavelength. And one of the videos I am going to post below, it's actually, they show how you can actually even, like, write in this space here, like, little letters. So say you're trying to do a voice uh, lip sync. You can write in the letters, like, as you're going along with your track in this area here. I can't remember how to do that though, I should have reviewed it before I did this, but look at that, it's really cool, I think that would be really handy for lip syncing. Um, yeah, and you can just hide that back up once you're done, that's what I usually do. And if you wanted to play, like say you have a really long animation, you just wanted to play a part of it, you can just do that same selection thing I showed you earlier, where you can select uh, on the timeline and drag at the bottom. So when you, oops, oh yeah, make sure you don't click the one that you already have selected, because then it's just going to drag it. So click on a random one ahead, then select, and then now if you press enter, or it's not enter, don't press enter, <laughs> enter as in keyframes for everything that you have selected, you don't want that. Um, so select it, and then press play, and then it's only playing that one section, so that's handy. Um... You can also import images into your scene um, by going File, Open. I'm going to find just a random one from earlier. I think there's just numbers from an earlier tutorial I tried to do. Um, so I'm going to click on this one. And... If you go single frame, um, it's going to show everything there, and go import, and it's going to import it onto a new layer for you. And so yeah, so if you want to import an image for like reference for color or anything else you need, that's how you can do that. And just kind of going to get one last sweep through to see if there's anything else I missed. Oh yeah, I didn't really explain much of the time on the light table here. Um, let's go back to that quickly. Sorry, I kind of skipped over that after I opened it up. Got too excited about other stuff. Alright, so we have our light table. And as you can see, it has all these numbers. But that goes back to how many frames that you have. So I'm going to turn the light table back on for this layer. And as you can see, I can turn up to 10 different frames forward and ahead, which is really helpful. And I can pick which frames I want to see. So say I want to just animate between 0 and 5, and that way I can, like, zero is a blurry drawn. 
and say I want it to be closer to what frame 5 is than what's been between these. I can turn off all the other ones and just have the frame 5 that's ahead and in between do that. And there's also these little sliders which uh, control the opacity for your um, for the onion skin. So I can drag that down and then the one becomes really big. And it also even do like a gradual um, like make fade them gradually if you select certain ones. You can also just drag them wherever. And you can also change the color of them by clicking on these little color swatches and you can pick whatever color you want. Um, I'm just going to keep it the way they are. Um, and you can also switch it to none which just keeps it the color that is actually there and uh, just fades the color of the previous frame which can also be helpful. And I'm not sure what gradient does. Oh, so I'm guessing gradient starts it from one color the further away you are, and then makes it a different color? I don't know. I didn't use that one before. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be talking about it. You can check that it went out too. So both all of these are really helpful. Color's fine. And yeah, I don't think there's too much else I can show you guys. Let's see. Like I said, look at those other videos I posted. They're also really helpful. Um, I just wanted to show you a couple of things that I felt didn't weren't really shown in those videos, or maybe there's really long videos and didn't get to them in time. Um, I think to do what else? What else? What else? I feel like there's something more important else to show you with the layers. <laughs> um, but I can't think of it. Anywho. The more you play around with it, the more comfortable you're going to get with it. I mean, I was a little shaky for the first, like, hour that I was using it. But once you start drawing around and just, you know, just do a bouncing ball, you know. Do something simple just to get used to it. The interface is really simple. I mean, TV Paint was designed to be a uh, transition for artists who are on paper going onto the computer because most animation programs like Flash and Toon Boom have been vector based, which is just completely, I don't know, I don't like drawing with vectors really personally. I like the look of, you know, like, with, like this is, to me, using this is like using Photoshop. And with the textured brushes, it really is like drawing on paper. You can get some really nice effects. And TV Paint can actually be a really nice, um, has some really cool things that you can do in it if you know what you're doing. They put a lot of effort into the coding of the program, not so much the looks of it. So it may not look pretty, but it is pretty powerful. Um, one thing to note before I go is that TV Paint is used for just frame by frame animation. There, it doesn't have tweening, like motion tweens and things like that, like Photoshop has. So, or I mean, sorry, Flash has. So if you're looking for something like that, um, you might want to stick with Flash. If you're going to go to TV Paint, you're going to be doing a lot of hand-drawn animation, like frame by frame. And if you need to move one little thing, you're you expected to move it. <laughs> I mean, you could, if you really wanted to, you could just, you know, use the panning tool and just move each frame, you know, manually, however you want. There's ways around it, but there's no easy way like there is in Flash. You can't do puppets and all that fun stuff. But I hope this was helpful. I hope I answered a couple of questions. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah, if you guys liked this video, if you want to see more tutorials, just leave some comments about what you want to see. Tell me if you liked it. Um, be nice. It's my first one. I know it's probably terrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I will see you guys later. Keep being awesome and keep animating.